Beef Boy is back because today we are making hot dogs and I unfortunately cannot spend five minutes to make my hair presentable. Hey, maybe if I did, uh, some blue-skinned, triple-breasted alien princess would have abducted me already. Hey, listen, if there's one guy that deserves it, it's me. So, maybe, maybe, maybe before next cooking video I have to film that'll happen. Uh, but we got a bunch of high-quality organic ingredients, so this is not only going to be a delicious hot dog, it's going to be as healthy as can be, something you can eat every day without any guilt whatsoever. So let me show you guys the ingredients before my eyes get even more cross and I can't do anything. On the left here, the madman is going to make his own hot dog buns. Not a classic hot dog bun recipe, so if you guys want to skip that part or you're buying your own buns, by all means, you're going to cut out a large chunk of this video. And honestly, I only crave this once or twice a month, so, you know, even though they probably use fluoridated water and there might be some, whoop, I guess we're going to be using no water if I spill it again. And there might be some other quality issues with buying organic hot dog buns, but it's not that big of a deal. We have our organic sourdough starter, organic instant yeast, organic bread flour, some glass bottle mineral water, and just a little bit of organic coconut oil. All this stuff, guys, is available on frankiestrangefoods.com. And then on the right here, we have the main attraction, which is our super high quality organic beef hot dogs from Frankie's Syringe Meat. These are very special, made with local grass-fed beef. I personally made the fresh garlic and onion mixture that went into this, unlike most hot dogs. Well, I mean, all hot dogs are probably made with dried spices, which is why this is so special. And there's also some collagen beef broth in here. So if these aren't the best hot dogs you guys have ever tried, <laughs> Please let me know, because because then I got to figure something out. I'm wasting my time. Uh, we have our sauerkraut, which is available on FrankieStrangeFoods.com. I think we're running a little low on this, but we're going to make more soon. And we have our garlic dill pickles that are, we have plenty of these on the foods website. And the reason we have pickles here is because relish, if you didn't know, I didn't know until I just Googled it, relish is made from pickles. So hypothetically, if we chop up these pickles, we'll have our own homemade relish. And then, uh, courtesy of Wegmans, <laughs> we got some spicy brown mustard. This is the only organic mustard at that supermarket that didn't have a bunch of preservatives in it. You want to kind of avoid avoid citric acid, uh, tartaric acid. They put a bunch of preservatives in a lot of mustard. So, yeah, I didn't have time to go to Whole Foods, go back to New York, or, or order some mustard uh, online. So, this is what I grabbed. I mean, plastic container, not ideal, but just our salt to wrap things up. A little bit of salt we're going to put in the bread. Uh, and that's really it. We're not putting salt on anything else. So hypothetically, you know, if, if you buy your own hot dog buns, you're just going to be assembling. So again, you can skip this next part where I'm going to make my own buns. Guys, first time I've ever bought anything relatively expensive new in my life is this KitchenAid mixture. They're kind of hard to get used. And I make a lot of bread, so I figured, hey, if I'm giving away <laughs> the amount of $1,000 checks I wrote to give money away to people, I was like, all right, let me buy myself one thing for once. Because... Oh, and I do have I do have a funny story about these KitchenAid mixers. Yeah, so this has been a nightmare, just trying to get one of these. Buying new off Amazon. First one I bought, this whole metal thing came snapped off. Had to return it. Second one I bought, I, I went down to a, a cheaper model because the first one was too big. Uh, the first one was an 8 quart. It was too big, but it came broken anyway, so I went down to the regular size. The bowl got embedded in, the bowl got embedded into it after the first time I used it. I was sitting here with all my might trying to pull that ball out and I was like, if I gotta get a hammer, I'm gonna break this thing. So I returned it. That was the second one. <laughs> the third one I bought was this one and it was really loud and I wasn't sure if the motor was bad or if that's how loud it was supposed to be. And then I bought a fourth one, which is this one. And I was wrong, the, third, the motor was correct. It's just a little loud. So <laughs> after four nightmare, can't imagine if I would have tried to buy this thing used, but yeah, I mean, anything on Amazon that's relatively expensive, I wouldn't buy it. Uh, one time a few years ago, I bought a generator, uh, not a generator, um, a commercial dehumidifier back when they had the floods in New York, and someone just stole it, and they marked it as delivered. So just be careful. When, when you're buying anything over like $200 on Amazon, just, I wouldn't do it. I would try to get it in person. All right, well, that's enough yapping. You guys saw the kitchen mixer. We also have this scale here, and we're going to use the Instant Pot too for these hot dog buns. So just to be clear, this is not a classic hot dog recipe that would normally involve butter and eggs. This is just a clean, minimal inflammatory one that I can eat every day on my current 
liver detox diet. So we got 300 grams of water, and we're gonna add about a tablespoon of sugar, maybe a little less. And we got our packet of instant yeast. And I like to put this on the burner. We're gonna take a thermometer and a spoon and just stir it. And we wanna bring this up to maybe like 90, 95 degrees just so the water is warm and, and the yeast blooms a lot faster. So a gas stove like this, it's not that much water. And on high heat, we're already at 95 degrees after maybe 20 seconds. So I'll just turn this off. And now we're gonna let this yeast sit for about five minutes before we put in all the other ingredients, just so the yeast eats the sugar, gets back to being alive and active again. So the yeast has been chilling for a few minutes. We're gonna zero out the scale and add 600 grams of flour if I don't rip the rest of the bag open. So to the 600 grams of flour, we're going to add 100 grams of sourdough starter or a little more, 150 grams. Doesn't really matter if you go over on the starter because the hydration ratio isn't really gonna change that much. What will change is the amount of dough you have and if that's too much for you to eat, that's the only issue that would really happen. So whether you add 100 or 150 starter, for this recipe, since it's such a short fermentation, it doesn't matter. So we're just gonna add maybe 20 grams of oil and then a heavy pinch of salt, more like half a handful. We wanna to get to about 10 grams of salt. So we got our bread mixture in the mixer, and we're just gonna put this on. So what I normally do is, I just throw the mixer on too, and then let it do its own thing for about 10 minutes. Yeah, so you could leave it on stir or two for about 10 minutes, any more than that might overheat. All right, so for about 10 minutes, our KitchenAid mixer is not hot enough to fry an egg yet, so we're in a good spot. But I can certainly smell the heat of the, uh, the gear grease, or whatever is in there. So now we just want to put this into a smaller bowl so that it fits in the Instant Pot. And guys, this dough ratio took me a few tries to figure out. I think 300 grams of water and uh, what do we say, 600 or 650 flour is, is perfect. With that much starter, it's, it's not that sticky, it's decently hydrated, it looks good. So I kept looking for all of these bread proofers and stuff to help me rise the bread. I was using heating pads. Little did I know, the yogurt setting on the Instant Pot is all you need. So yogurt, one hour, that should be it. Uh, I should have said this at the beginning, but the total prep time for these hot dog buns from start to finish is probably about three hours. You know, this initial prep took half an hour, then it's gonna be two hours of rising and maybe half an hour of cooking. So it's been a bit more than an hour. This isn't too crazy time sensitive. We just wanna have one rise around an hour and then the second rise around an hour. You guys can see this has you know, increased in size pretty drastically. All right, so I'm gonna just scrape this off the sides. The top can get a little dry, so I'm just kind of folding this over itself a few times. Now we're gonna zero out the scale. And I'm gonna take 100 grams of dough at once. So I want this to read negative 100. It's, if it's higher than negative 100, you took too much out. So we're at a negative 103, so that means this is probably around 100 grams. And we could test that too. We could just, we could take this out. We could zero the scale. We could throw that in there. It's about, yeah, 103 grams exactly, so. Put that back in, we'll zero it out again. So here's obviously my dough, and then here on heating pad I have a steel sheet pan with some parchment paper. I'm just, you know, taking 100 grams of dough in my hand. I'm gonna kind of form it to a, a cylindrical hot dog shape, and then we're gonna lay these out nicely on this sheet tray. So I'm just rolling this between my hands to spread it out. That looks about good to me. So I'll put that there and then we'll do a bunch more. Well, they don't look perfect, but they'll definitely get the job done. Uh, so that only took about half the dough. I'm gonna just put some plastic on this, put it in the fridge, and then tomorrow, if I wanna make some fresh buns or whatever shape bread I wanna make, I can use it then. Still working out some kinks in this recipe, so I'm not sure how long you can leave this in the fridge 
in, until the yeast becomes inactive, but sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. All right, so we got the heating pad turned on, and this is just a damp rag that I'm gonna put on top so that the top of this doesn't dry out. And I don't really think it matters. If the top dries out, it might just get a little crustier in the oven. The problem with putting this rag on top is one, it might stick to the bread if you leave it too long and then you can't take it off, it ruins the bread. Second problem is it's a little heavy, you know? So it's kind of hampering the rising process to some degree, but uh, I don't know. So we're gonna let this go about another hour and then 45 minutes into that, we can preheat the oven so it's ready. You guys probably mostly hear the fan in the background, but it's been about an hour. These rose a little bit. Heating pad could be hotter, I guess, because they're kind of cold on top, but uh, you know, I don't have all day to make hot dogs and this should be good enough because they should rise a little bit in the oven. So I'm just gonna take my knife and make a cut down the middle. And instead of egg, what I like using is our uh, beef stock concentrate or our collagen broth from Frankie Strange Meat. I take a little bit on my hand and I just rub it on top. It's the same principle, you know, the, the protein in the egg kind of browns it easier. The protein in the, uh, in the stock here is gonna brown the top. So oven's been on about yeah, 400 for 20 minutes. Pop these in, and probably take about 20 minutes at 400. Alright, 25 minutes later, we're looking good. A little browning on the top, perfect. Well, not really perfect because they're all different shapes, but <laughs> not bad. Now that our from scratch hot dog buns are finished, we can get to the real business. Making the hot dogs with sauerkraut relish and mustard all we're going to do is score the hot dogs sear them in a pan with oil steam them a few minutes and dice up the pickles so if you did happen to buy your own buns you can basically have lunch or dinner ready within a few minutes so i can't really eat more than two of these that's what we're going to do now whether you want to grill them steam them boil them it's up to you i'll show you guys what i like doing so cut maybe an eighth of an inch score in the side of these so they don't shrivel up in the pan. I'm gonna do that on both sides. So we'll turn our gas on here. As you guys can see, hot dogs are scored. We're just gonna put a little bit of cooking oil in the pan. So we got our pan nice and hot here. Put our hot dogs in. You can see they're already starting to to split apart and the outside of these are pretty dry so you know just a few seconds in the pan you're already going to get that grilled flavor and i always do things like as quick and easy as possible because with how much i work and how tired i am i just want to eat as quickly as possible so after about 20 seconds in the hot pan i put a little bit of water in the pan cover it up turn the heat off take this off to the heat a little bit and then we'll prepare everything else while these are done steaming. Now I've done this before with just the sauerkraut, some mustard, absolutely delicious, best hot dogs I've ever had. But we're gonna try adding the pickles in the traditional relish style. So if you guys haven't seen all my shorts and videos about them, uh, the new lacto-fermented vegetables on frankiesurangefoods.com are made with a natural fermentation process that builds up beneficial probiotic bacteria as well as the best flavor you can achieve from these products. So here we have our garlic dill pickles. Smell amazing. Very fermented. Very fermented. Yeah, you could smell that bite. Um, I don't think we'll need more than three of these for the for both hot dogs. Just put a little relish on. So this basically needs to be minced. I guess you could say like a uh, brun brunoise would be the French term for it. Uh, basically as tiny as possible. I didn't look too much into it, but I'm sure some of you guys have seen the, the neon green relish that they put on hot dogs. 
So I'm just going down, cutting like three slices out of this cucumber, and then I'm going to go down the side, and then we'll just chop it all up at the end. Imagine being a normal person, bro, <laughs> not making your own pickles and, and chopping them up. Imagine just going to the... Uh, the hot dog cart on the street and just having a nice hot dog all ready for you for two dollars imagine oh my god all right i'm not gonna go too crazy that's good enough for me so we have everything ready guys our hot dogs are done here we got our our buns are all ready we got our sauerkraut ready to put on the mustard and our relish so all we have to do is assemble probably take some type of plastic off of this which buns look the best? This one is a little wide, but it looks good. So normally, you know, hot dog bun, you go straight down the middle, but the, the way these are, it's better to go on the side. because you have a nice deep cavity to put everything. Now I like a decent amount of sauerkraut on mine. So what I actually do is I put sauerkraut in twice. So we're going to put some sauerkraut on the bottom here. And what this also does is it, it makes it like a complete meal from a soluble fiber perspective. So normally if you didn't have a lot of sauerkraut in this, you know, it's not that great for gut motility, but, and I'm being 100% honest, I think it tastes better with a lot more sauerkraut and it's also a lot better for you from a complete meal perspective. So we got the sauerkraut in the bottom. We got our hot dog. Our bun to dog ratio is looking pretty good. We're gonna take our mustard. And I wanna be careful with this mustard because I don't really want that much on it. So I'm gonna do like that and then I'm gonna just spread the mustard on the hot dog. A light smear of mustard on both hot dogs. Then we'll put our relish on. I don't know how much of of this I would actually like, but we'll just sprinkle a little bit on both sides of the hot dog. So that's pretty much everything. Now we're just going to put some more sauerkraut on top. That should be good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I guess I'm eating dinner at a reasonable time tonight because I didn't take a nap and filming this video forced me to make this. But this looks amazing. I did have I did have this a few days ago because I was really craving hot dogs. Uh, but there was no relish on it and the buns were a little too big. So I guess we can compare it to that. Every component of this tastes good. The bun's delicious, the bread's delicious on its own. Keep the sauerkraut on its own. You keep the hot dog on its own, you keep the pickles on their own, they're all delicious. Yeah, I mean, it's really delicious. I think you would definitely put more relish on. I would really put, like we put the sauerkraut in the bottom, I put sauerkraut and relish on the bottom too. Maybe even a little mustard on the bottom too, just so you get Everything with every bite. You know Chicago style dogs? They just put a pickle in the hot dog. I'm gonna go grab one. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget your water key for grains and your uh, organ supplements. You gotta make sure to take my zinc, molybdenum, and mastic gum, and vitamin B1 with every meal. Okay, so now we're gonna just try it with some more relish, AKA a whole pickle next to the hot dog. That's good too because, or just add more relish. It brings a little more acidity to help break up the, you know, the richness of the bread because the, sa the sauerkraut 
Sauerkraut doesn't have like a crazy bite to it, you know? So yeah, whether you guys want, you know, a healthy way to, to, you know, beat that hot dog craving, or you want to change your pace, or you want to give your family something healthy and special that you know is genuinely good for you, like I would eat this every single day, lunch and dinner, if I, if I wanted to. That's uh, that's why I make these cooking videos for you guys. So, uh, thank you guys for joining. Hey, please support me in any way you can, guys. It is <laughs> spent spent three four hours of my day editing and filming. Anytime I have to do something like this, so uh, it's really a pain. But I won't complain too much today. We mentioned throughout the video where you guys can get all this stuff and uh, do your own version of it. You guys can check out frank-stefan.com where you will see all of my interesting and unique health businesses and you can support me further. But outside of that, guys, please drop a like on the video. Leave a comment down below. Make sure to subscribe and check that notification bell. And I'll see you guys soon. I don't die from hot dog overdose.